flying deaf, so to speak, right now, because I can't get any sound output on my computer. That's not a good thing if I'm doing a sound recording, but it is what it is. There's a variety of topics that came up uh, in conversation and everything. Now, I do have a cigar. I do have coffee today. Uh, due to computer equipment, and, I, and I'm actually not a heavy cigar smoker, I'm an occasional one. So due to that, I recommend be careful when smoking e-cigarettes or something around computer equipment because that's water vapor coming out. And it usually dissolves pretty quickly. Uh, smoke is just as harmful, if not more so, because it, it solidifies and gunks up and becomes an oil. Just thought I would throw that out there. I don't watch uh, I don't watch Hollywood Pape, so I really don't care who wins Best Picture or anything at the Oscars or whatever, because the Oscars is about as as a uh, Marxist as it gets, and I don't mean the political speakers. And they, they've decided solely to infuriate the majority of s states and counties. And then they wonder why the box office revenue is dropping down, why television ratings are in the gutter. Well, and newspapers are falling apart so forth and so on. Well, it comes down to that eight companies weren't supposed to own everything. Now, I know you can probably expand that to maybe at, at the most 30 companies, but they're controlled by the top eight. And I really don't feel like bashing MGM with that lump. So, it's actually more like the seven plus MGM who's doing their own thing. Which is good. That, that there's nothing wrong with that kind of individuality. I've already talked about that. But here's here's what I get about it. This is what should be the Oscars, is every category except special categories like documentary, short subject, whatever. Every category should be the top five non-animated films. And then for animated films, eight animated films can also join... Uh, best director, best picture, best editor, and so forth and so on. But, but for things like set design, actress, and all that stuff, you don't want animated films. That's what I'm saying. But overall, what I'm saying is this. The top five grossing films domestically in the United States should be the ones that get all the nominations every year. They don't even need an academy to sit there and say this and that. Because the audience has spoken through their wallet. They have spoken by attending these films, films like Suicide Squad, films like Guardians of the Galaxy, films like Deadpool, films, well, I don't know why I said Guardians of the Galaxy, it wasn't released last year, films like Star Wars Rogue One. That's what should be up there. Angry Birds movie, Warcraft, whatever. I don't know if Warcraft is actually a top grossing film or not. I'm, it's just, I like the movie. Reminds me of an old time fantasy movie, like, um, done better than Dragon Slayer or. What's that one with Tom Cruise? Legend. Um, way better than Lady Hawk. Even better than The Black Cauldron, I dare say. And I do dare it. Now, anyone who knows me knows I like The Black Cauldron, but I don't actually like the movie. I love the characters, universe, premise, story, set design, or, well, artistic design. But I don't actually like... I actually don't like the film at all. It, to me, it's a Shrek. Shrek. Schlock. Shrek is not schlock. <laughs> at least not the first two. And, um, here's a side note. Does anyone else think that, um, well, it looks cool that Brian Setzer making his, uh, horn guys flip the horns is dumb? I don't, and I have nothing against Brian Setzer at all, actually. 
love that guy's music. Love that guy's style. Uh, there's a lot of good and positives around Brian Setzer. What I don't like is he makes his band put the horns. <laughs> uh, call it call it picky there. So that's what I'm being. I'm being picky and petty. So I'm just saying in, in under a few minutes here that in the gist of it, Oscars, Game Awards, all that stuff should be based on total amount of sales for that year. Music awards as well. Because the point is, by nominating these things that nobody cares about, games awards aren't as bad as, as movie and TV awards, but by nominating what actually is viewed, watched, and loved, then that that's honesty. By nominating shit nobody ever wants to watch, use, or love, that's dishonest. That's all. Now allow me to take a puff of this cigar. Now, what are some real topics, though? I searched the uh, thing, and, um, so yesterday a friend of mine wants to go ahead and get a 3DS, or 2DS, preferably a 2DS due to price. Malls close at 6 p.m. on Sunday. Why? Why, do we not live in what we're told is an atheist society? I don't. I love the Lord. And to quote Arsenio Hall's character from Coming to America, if loving the Lord is wrong, they don't want to be right. But, why do malls... Um, I've seen it less on Saturday. I've seen malls stay open till 9 on Saturday. But why on Sunday? Why, why open late, close late? Not that I complained when I worked at a mall, but I am complaining as a consumer. As a consumer who does understand this, would I not like to make more money myself on a Sunday? Hmm. Yes, I would as a business owner. I would like to make more money on Sundays. So as a consumer, I would like to give the consumer something. I'd like to be open. I would personally like to be open from 9, or no, excuse me, malls open at 10. I don't know why. Well, see, there's another thing. Why do malls open at 10 when the lunch hour isn't until 12? Well, do some people have an early lunch? Well, then maybe the food court should be open early, right? I don't know. But malls are traditionally open from the unrealistic time till 10, but they close at also the unrealistic time at 9 p.m. and on Sundays the super unrealistic time of 6 p.m. And then other stores follow suit. You guys are just saying no to money. We, the consumers, I don't know who my listeners are, but we, the consumers, say yes to we giving you money and, you know, step up to the plate. So, what could have been an easy 10-minute total trip turned into an hour, which is still pretty good time considering that, that um, this is Las Vegas and it's not easy to get from point A to point B to point B to point A. Two reasons. The first reason that it's hard or a challenge to get from point A to point B to point B to point A is because so many people here refuse to assimilate to Las Vegas roadways, so very few drivers know all the little routes. Second reason is the roads are poorly designed, or poorly maintained, or poorly... Well, no, design covers it all. Not so much the ma maintenance. Las Vegas is pretty good about that, actually. Private parking I've seen that falls apart. And because of that, traffic is a nightmare. Just too many people don't assimilate. In college, a friend of mine called these people freeway freaks. Now, that's his words, not mine, because I call them freeway fox. We have a joke in Las Vegas. Not really a joke, more of an insult. There's people who live on West Tropicana who need to get to East Tropicana. I have seen these people either 
drive. Uh, let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five miles north to get on US 95 south to get to East Tropicana. Because they're too stupid. They, they actually do. This is true. They do not know that Tropicana goes all the way through town to the Silver Bowl. If you know what the Silver Bowl is, Sam Boyd Stadium is what they call it. It's called the Silver Bowl. I've seen them drive two and a half miles north to the two I-215. Well, the 215, but it's I-215. It's an interstate which doesn't go anywhere. Um, and again, take it down to I-15 or even US-95, which is farther, to get to East Tropicana. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that's one example I have. There are many. There are many, many examples. You know, bravo to the people who assimilate and become Las Vegans. Uh, that's what it's called when we lived here. Even though it's spelled like vegan, we had it first, so it's vegan. And the Las Vegans who live here, who assimilate here, who become part of the Nevada way, you know, these things don't, we don't drive like this because it doesn't bother us. We don't get stuck in traffic or anything like this. So it was pretty good timing last night because um, I knew the roads, I know how the lanes are going to be, I know where to turn and not turn. So it was pretty neat. So because the mall closed at 6 p.m., which is stupid, they should be open from now on from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. If the malls truly wanted to compete, and this is very unrealistic for the business owner, and I speak as a former mall business owner, if the malls truly wanted to compete, we'd be open 24 hours a day. So, um, I'll explain about the dead malls and what's actually killing retail and everything overall. I think I touched on it yesterday, but I'm going to touch on it again. So, after we can't find the 2DS, obviously we can't go to the mall. So, we go to Toys R Us. They're sold out. The girl there, very helpful girl. I've dealt with her many times. Uh, she's a girl till she turns 18. Plain and simple. She went ahead and explained that uh, Nintendo is the one who cleared out the 2DS's. They came in and took them. And the 3DS's. I think they had one new 3DS left. And, and in its place is a big old triangle cardboard thing that says Nintendo Switch. March whatever. Okay. They're like, well, Walmart's got to have at least one. Well, first we try another GameStop, which is also closed at... 6 p.m. It's like, well, oh, okay. I know people go to work and then they're like, I can't wait to get out of here. I have... You know, if you hate the job, I, I do understand that. I hated owning the three stores I did. I hated it. I absolutely put in the minimalist amount of effort. And then when I get jobs I love, I put in the maximum amount of effort and I still get in trouble. <laughs> These are jobs you can't keep me away from. You can't get me home. So, um, whatever, right? So the GameStop's closed. So we go to Walmart. It's in the same shopping center. They don't have any, but the guy there's like, yeah, Nintendo came in here and they started removing stuff, consolidating stuff for the Switch. All right, whatever. I'm not buying a Switch till next year. Or later this year, if, if at earliest. So finally we go to Zia Records, which we took the back roads to. And then at Zia Records, uh, I bought Dark Gage a movie. Yes, it's a YouTube collaboration with Bill Barnes. And I bought Dark Gage a movie. And there is a new 3DS used, I think it's used. It might have been new. That price was definitely new in my opinion. And they, they have that, and then they have a regular 3DS. Now, there was a misconception about the whole DS, 3DS thing, which got cleared up. This thing is uh, $180 before tax. 
But uh, Phil and his friend went ahead and, and went 50-50 on it and bought it. Because they, that's what they, they were looking for any 3DS by this point. And, well, that was that. Um, but it, it took that long, almost an hour, to finally get all this stuff. And if the mall had just been open at what we normal people who, you know, our Sabbath could be Tuesday. Uh, think about what I mean by that. If we go to church and we're busy, we have to work. We have to work where the money is. Money. Where is the money? The money is what keeps everything going. So don't don't think that money isn't there. Money is everything. Money is 100% can create happiness, can create sadness. A smart person knows how to deal with money and have a productive life. A very positive life. A, a bad person gets money and it disappears. That's why there's a saying, a fool and his money is soon parted. And also, the money is the root of all evil. But the money is also the root of all good. A person who learns a trade, loves their trade, whether it's farming. That's why it's called a trade, by the way. Auto mechanic, computer repair, video editing, singing. They earn money because it's what they love. None of their petty first world problems come into play because they're not working. They're living life. Um, who's, who wrote it? Was it Mark Twain? I don't know if it was Mark Twain. But somebody said, you know, get a job that you love, you'll never work a day. So while I say, yeah, you know, um, right now YouTube is a lot of work. And if I do bring, bring in sizable income, that would have to be... Um, That'd have to be, uh, I think, 5000 total annually. I would have to fill out quarterly uh, IRS 1099 forms. If I brought in that much money um, from YouTube, and if I even brought in a lot of money from uh, Patreon, I would have to file out these forms. It's not tax-free. Taxes have to be paid. Make under 5000 and then I don't have to worry about it. I don't make any of that, so I don't make any of that. I I seem to be blackballed by YouTube if we want to talk about that, but we're not. I'm talking about advertising. It's a, not a it's not a catch twenty two. This is fundamental business. There, there, the a catch twenty two. Um, I'll explain what that means. I don't know where the phrase came from, but I do understand the concept. Catch twenty two. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. The easiest example is there's a PSA of a guy who snorts cocaine. He's walking around in circles. So he goes, I, I snort cocaine so I can work longer hours. So I can buy more cocaine. So I can work longer hours. So I can buy more cocaine. So I can work longer hours. And he starts walking around in a circle and fades out with the end and always chasing rainbows and the partnership for drug-free America at the bottom. Oh, all right. That's fine. Dandy. Um, even Nostalgia Critic was confused by this. So, that's a catch-22. In his brain, anyways. But that that's one simple way of, of showing a catch-22. Uh, and also, I don't... I don't really see a drawback to what he's promoting. Note to the partnership, you backfired on that one. Um, if I have an employee who does good work and he's on cocaine and he's doing good work because he wants to get more cocaine, I'm, I'm going to let him work. Although, if I do a drug test as per company policy, he's out, unfortunately. Too bad. But, that's a catch-22. That's exactly what a catch-22 is. In business, it isn't like that. You have a product, you have a service, you advertise it. So if I have a product, service, or whatever, I have to advertise it. No advertisement, no, no money earned. That's exactly the problem I have right now with, with YouTube. Uh, they're not doing the promotion. TGN is not doing the promotion. So they dropped the ball on my advertisement. So what I would actually need to do 
that I don't have the money for. See, I have to have the money come in. Now, that's, there's the catch-22. You have to have money come in to go buy ads. You can't go buy ads without money. Well, the amount of money coming in cannot go out and buy ads. See, see what I'm getting at here? <laughs> that's a catch-22. But it is fundamental for all business to advertise. Have to do promos and advertising and everything. You want people. You want viewership. I want viewership. I want people. I want people to come and get the services. Whatever the services may be. Now, YouTube offers a service. Uh, not an actual tangible product. See, what tangible means is somebody can own what I've produced. I suppose someone could download it, but then if they download it, I don't get the views anymore. So, again, it's intangible the way it's set up. The Internet is an intangible asset. The Internet itself physically exists. Switching back. <laughs> because I don't want to talk about that. So, this leads to dead malls, dead retail. We're, we're in a weird economic boom. Everyone's hiring. Why are they hiring? Because the illegal aliens are self-deporting. Some states in the Union also... Um, hiring is occurring because... Uh, some welfare requirements require work. Okay. So, outside of those two aspects, we're not in an actual economic boom. We're not. At all. Um, it might seem like it, but we're not. What we have, I can't speak worldwide. But what we have here is, it's odd. It's very odd. The malls are dying. So, people like Ace's Adventures, uh, Dan Bell, and so forth and so on, speculate that um, Amazon, eBay, other e-commerce, you know, like digital downloads on your video game system, phone, whatever, killed the malls. No. What killed the malls is they stopped buying ads. And online ads don't count because we all use ad blocker. It's the truth. We all use ad blocker. I, I mean, I hate to break it to everybody, but everybody uses ad blocker. <laughs> uh, so they have to get the ads out there. But where? Well, the newspapers are dead. People have no reason to buy the newspapers because the newspapers fucked up in 1992. Or beforehand. See, if a newspaper had a BBS, I had to call in. Usually be a local newspaper would have the BBS. I could call in locally. Um, that works in theory. But then when the internet came out, they gave away their content for free. That cat ran it. No, cat's a wrong word. That horse ran out the gate, over the hill, through the meadow, jumped the river... And fuck the cow. He's gone. He's not coming back. What they needed to do was... Um, and like AOL's walled garden or whatever. I think that's what they were counting on as well. Was a cable TV type model. What the businesses needed to do... Um, like the newspapers. And there's a reason I have to bring up newspapers and magazines. They would still be in print... Or they would have a paid garden where someone subscribes for the same price as print, or maybe even half, to get that information digitally, which doesn't work with things like comic books um, and uh, novels. But like with inventions like the Kindle, um, which I still want to get the Kindle, even though I don't need one, and the... Um, Obviously, the iPad. I think Kindle was first. But with the invention of the ebook reader, just used as a general term, magazines could come back and they could have printed ads and they can be in such a way that's easy to read on e ink uh, displays like 
uh, the black and white Kindle. Um, that was a fundamental first step. I understand e-ink couldn't exist. You know, it it all starts with calculators and the Game Boy and Tiger electronic things, Game and Watch, all that stuff. So I understand completely about technology. But what they should have done is started the walled garden, and they weren't forward thinking. Um, I hate to say it, Apple's forward thinking, Nintendo's forward thinking. All these other companies are fly by the seat of your pants, a disorganized mess. Um, other than Apple and, and Nintendo, I, I don't know what to say. Everyone else is literally that. No, in actuality, that. I, I mean, everywhere I go, it's just like fly by the seat of your pants and deal with it. And Apple's kind of getting that way lately. Nintendo, not so much. Um, AOL was very forward-thinking for a very long time. But then they stopped. Uh, I think 4.0 or 5.0 was like the last good releases. And that that's not saying much. So if they had these so-called walled gardens and a person had to either subscribe to a premium service, Yahoo, AOL, etc., well, they would still be in a lot of these will still be in business or profitable. Uh, Yahoo's biggest asset is they have email addresses. That's it. It's true. It's a tangible asset. A lot of people spent time in chat rooms and whatever. And these fan sites grew up. So these websites that have come about because the walled gardens had free content actually that's a good, people thought it was free I'm paying for access therefore it's free and these websites these new sites everything came out like if next gen or next generation magazine let's okay let's use an example here next generation magazine comes out now if they completely controlled the narrative um, they would still be in business as an e-ink magazine and then the website reflects that and then what they have to do is they have to give away the content later so what I mean by that is this is March 2017's issue of Next Generation magazine okay and this doesn't exist by the way but and then I get my copy on my Kindle for iPad app. Walkie talkie by my door. I don't know if there's a cop here or something. Hold on. Hey, anyone out there? Let's be animal control. My dogs are inside, so it's not for me. Let's be animal control. Oh, yeah, it's after 7, so they, they would have started work about a half hour ago. Anyways, um, sorry about that, folks. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Um, so the the if the issue comes out now, and as a subscriber, so I pay, like I said, it should be half for digital. So I pay, let's say they charge twenty dollars a year, I pay ten for the digital. So now that I have the digital copy of Next Generation for March 2017, I read it on my Kindle app. Or let's say I have a Kindle, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's say, let's say I have a black and white Kindle. Okay, so I read it on that. And no problem, I enjoy the articles and everything. I get to see the ads. Then later they release that as a heavily copy-protected, undownloadable uh, PDF. This is possible. This is possible with some Java and Flash programming from a, and from Adobe's expertise. I've seen this. I've seen un, undownloadable. If someone... They have to do it through screen caps, and even then the screen caps come out blank. I've seen this. I've seen this just recently as last week, actually. I meant to make a screen cap instead of a print of something. So, by doing this, and even if it is a screen cap, it's now a picture. So it can't be processed as a PDF. Even if the picture is converted to a PDF, the human eye can read it, the electronic eye cannot. So, by a month later... They, re they release it for free on their website. So if people want to have month-old news, and they see that's how it would work. So like with the newspaper, they wait two weeks, put the archive out verbatim of what they printed, 
right then and there. And then I think newspapers also, they don't need to be a broadsheet. In fact, the broadsheet has shrunk a lot. They, they should be magazine size. I think everything should be uh, 8 by 11. Comic books should go up to 8 by 11 and magazines, newspapers, everything should be shrunk down to 8 to 11. So that's just a thought right there. And that had they done this in the beginning, uh, PDF has been around for a long time. So it would have been possible to do this on dial-up and everything. That the information you're getting is there. Now by keeping the information tight-lipped and everything, then we don't get this second-by-second -second countdown of everything, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Sites like Twitter and Facebook and whatever would never have risen because there would have been no reason for the rise. Chat rooms would still be dominant. And I don't mean because people are looking to sell porn or whatever. It would have just risen as dominant because of this idea. Now, th obviously, there's a thousand and one points here that haven't been addressed. Because I'm, I'm going with just the germ and roots of the idea. that need nurturing and growing. But it, it, it'll never happen now. Newspapers, magazines, they gave away their content for free. In their place grew within the last 20 years free content providers so EGM Electronic Gaming Monthly started videogames.com which is now today gamespot.com which is today owned by CBS who's owned by National Amusements while that may have worked out for everyone in the back room it does not work out for the consumer it's Hope it's a dust devil. Sounds like a. That's a dust devil. Okay. <laughs> um, it's too bright for a tornado. There's been no hail or thunder or anything. Plus, I live in Las Vegas. How often do we get a tornado? What, once a year? It's in the rural area? So let's go back to this. Um, EGM made money by doing this. I, where the money went, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's up with Steve Harris. Um, EGM's fall from grace was their anti-Nintendo bias. And being bounced around from owner to owner to owner to owner. And their recent fall from grace is, again, anti-Nintendo bias. I have the issue somewhere to show. They even bashed the guy in the letters column. Um... There's just something about Nintendo's good karma that I, I wouldn't cross the company on, on my, my best day. You know, for over 20 years, Sony has never made a profit from PlayStation. It's been a money suck. And they, 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 they make this much in revenue, but they make zero in profit. They're in the red in profit, actually. Meaning there's no profit there. There's loss. So after revenue, then there's loss because then they have to pay employees and all this stuff and everything. It, it's it's odd. It's an odd way of doing business. Microsoft has thrown that one also a ton of money. Um, they also aren't making a profit with Xbox. Luckily, even if a person's using a Mac or Linux, there's Microsoft things that have to be paid for and put on these operating systems. So that's the way that works. And, um, well, you know, what about ads on the desktop or something? Like that? That's been talked about in technology. Um, ads on smartphones, whatever. I think uh, Amazon had a, a version of the Kindle that was 100% ad supported. So the device was free. The person's given the device. It's supported for five years, and it, it's plagued with ads. But there, there comes a time when why are the malls dead is because they can't get their ads on the news, newspaper anymore. I, you know, I, the last time I seen the newspaper has the typical ads. It's been homogenized. Everyone is into maintenance and not into uh, dynamics. By being comfortable, they fall. It's, it's either rising or falling. Can't have both. Not going to get into how the ball stops for an unmeasurable amount of time. It does come to a complete stop. That is true. But there still has to be goods and services. So everyone's going to eat. So everyone's still going to go to the grocery store. 
Everyone still needs to wipe their ass, so they're still going to go to the grocery store. Um, everyone's still going to drive around, so they're, they're going to need to buy gas for their car. So let's look at some fundamental things that people need. And then everything else has to be taken out of what they would consider fundamental to their personal lives. So first and foremost is food. People need food. Now, they might be picky on the food they want, but people need food. They need food, and they need water. I don't care if they're drinking gin and juice, okay? I, they need food, and they need water. They need clothing. They need to wipe their ass. Okay, so that's the things that can be bought at a grocery store. Toilet paper, food, liquids... Closing. Well, closing not really at a grocery store, right? Ah. Oh. So there are stores dedicated mostly to closing. A person can get by without a bed, blankets, all that stuff. It's inconvenient. But a person can't get by without closing because our society demands closing. What do you think we are? A bunch of Malcolm McDowell, Caligula people running around in bed sheets? No, we are a modernized society that runs around in clothing. It's debatable about some way some of the clothes looks, but that's what we do. We run around with clothes on. You know, things like pets or whatever, that's all auxiliary. So, a person also needs transportation. So they're either going to buy a bus pass, a bicycle, walk, so they're going to need shoes, or they're, they're going to drive or get a ride. So they're going to need gasoline. So let's lump gasoline, shoes, uh, and a bus pass or a subway pass into the same thing. Uh, transportation. So a person needs to have locomotion and transportation. A person then also needs to wipe their ass. A person uh, may or may not need ah, glasses and hearing aids or prosthetics or whatever. So we'll put in some form of, of um, medical aid here. So it could be an oxygen tank, whatever. And a person's going to need to eat and drink with clothes. Now, the closing part is where the malls came in. They gave a reason that, hey, express yourself with the latest in fashions. You have the latest in fashions, supposed to be nice and neat looking fashions, to prove your wealth, worth, education, and self-dignity. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to put this, but if a girl dresses like a slut, I'm going to treat her like a slut. If a guy dresses like trash, I'm going to treat him like trash. That's my first impression when I see somebody. I can go and see a gangster, and if he's got his his um, his Dickies shirt and his Dickies pants nice and neat, I mean I know I know I know the guy's a gangbanger, and he has his you know he has his hat on properly and everything. He comes up to me and shakes my hand. I got a profound respect for that person. Then the other guy who's got his pants around his ankles, I don't really care. They has hearts on his boxer shorts. And uh, he's wearing a Coors t-shirt with the Coors pretty much faded. And he's got a, a, a beer belly and an unkempt beard. Sorry. First impressions. Oh, don't judge a book by its cover? Fuck you. That's all we judge it by. That's first impressions, my man. You got to understand that. So where does advertising come into this? Where do the malls come into this? Well, we, it's a place to go be seen. Any retail outlet is, but I feel that there's too many open-air retail outlets. The mall is a place that's raining, you go to the mall and go shopping. But then it should be a one-stop shop. It should be cheap for the vendors as well. That's not my other gripe with the mall. They want too much for rent. It's artificial inflation. We're paying, with cam charge, $18,000 a month at the mall I was per restaurant. Fuck them. Fuck Forest City for all they're worth, because... Um, why? Why? Why charge the vendor so much? You know, rent should be 500 bucks. For the anchor stores, 1000 For the cam charge, 
20 bucks. I mean, jeez, come on. So they wonder why people don't want to go in the malls anymore. And then they wonder why retail overall is dying. Because if a person gets cheap rent on a business, they don't want to... They don't want to fucking go to a, uh, a bad part of town. So, you know, they also have to have a certain amount of freedom. What if they need to remodel, make the store look like the, all their other stores? Oh, they can't do that? Well, I don't know then. You, now you've got the, the vendor on the, on, the, uh, on the bad part. The other problem is with a lot of businesses, especially in America, going out of business, consolidating, and merging, uh, and there's a simple solution for that, but I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. It's gotten rid of competition. Uh, the simplest solution, this goes for everything from banking to gas stations to toy company or toy stores, not toy companies. But yeah, all companies, they all have to be owned within the state. And if that happened, I mean, oh wow, that would actually be a boom to business locally. What if newspapers had to be locally owned? In Las Vegas we have that, but I, I mean, I understand in the rest of the world they do not. The rest of the country does not. What if banking had to be local? They have to be locally chartered banks. I mean, that would be great. There would be competition from the banks. I would love to see that. This competition would then drive advertising. Advertising would then drive people to the businesses. But how do they get the ads on? How we're getting into a problem, though. We've established, or I have anyways, well to maybe even half arguments, but newspaper and magazines are ineffective. Television is completely ineffective. They can localize ads on YouTube, maybe driving people to YouTube Red, okay. But what YouTube needs to do is, on behalf of the vendors, have 15-second unskippable ads, 30-second unskippable ads, but no more. No more than 30 seconds. If they can do that and help local businesses out, um throughout, you know, the whole internet um, and localize themselves like that, it would actually work out better for vendors. Now they have, their their eyes will be seen because uh, YouTube is one of the biggest users of bandwidth on the planet. Why would it not, <laughs> excuse me for breathing and because I'm starting to laugh, but why wouldn't they do that? Now, the one thing I encourage YouTube to never show is political or religious ads. That includes ads about uh, science and evolution um, and allow people to go ahead and mark ads that appear um, if they are offended by the ad they can go ahead and do that. That doesn't mean the ads shouldn't be made except for um, politics and religion. Those ads just don't belong on YouTube. YouTube is for entertainment purposes. Where do those ads belong? Well, really nowhere. Um, you know, TV stations. We don't have ratings, but, you know, Canada Day just bought all these ads from us. Surprisingly on YouTube, I saw more ads for Donald Trump than any other candidate. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, and, um... I never saw one of these ads over the air. Now, with over the air, they have to learn, for TV station, they have to learn who their audience is. Having news on 12 hours a day. <sighs> Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Dean Wormer. And it's true. That's what n news is. Uh, get, get rid of the news. <laughs> Entertain the children. Oh, you can't entertain the children because they're on their devices. How do you get them off their devices? Look, you can't. You can't get them off the devices. So how, how is money supposed to be made when kids have these devices? I don't know. This is the quagmire. Now we're, we found the true catch-22 in modern business. How to get the kids... I mean, you got kids who are saying today that they're not interested in sex? The, the world's best feeling? Well, something's wrong there. We know that they're not playing video games. We know they're not playing 
Well, they are playing music, but it's all stolen or streamed. They don't, they don't go and buy music. We know that. The smart ones, they don't even go to the library because that would mean going somewhere. You know, and oh, by the way, I'm going to throw this out here. I'm being of the Korean persuasion. 